What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel. I got another week one preview and prediction video up for you. And today, we're going to be going over the new look Colorado Buffaloes as Coach Prime has flipped Boulder completely upside down against the national runner-ups from a season ago. The Cinderella story that everybody fell in love with, it's the TCU Horn Frogs in Fort Worth, Texas. Before we dive into this preview prediction, thank you guys so much for all the support uh, and just love and everything the channel has seen over the past couple months. If you want to continue to show your support during the season, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you know when videos get uploaded, but there are more ways than that to help me support my channel. You guys are doing one right now by watching the video, and you guys can do more by liking, commenting, sharing, anything else you guys are willing and able to do to help me support my channel would mean a lot to me uh and uh, again just helps grow this channel get it out to more people so thank you guys so so much okay colorado tcu let's talk about this matchup you got coach prime on one end with the colorado buffaloes that i mean he's just come in and absolutely flipped this whole thing upside down boulder is hanging from the rafters right now uh because he's brought in so many transfers and this program is going to look completely different this year meanwhile the tcu horn frogs did lose a lot of pieces from their national runner-up season last year but this is the team still ready to compete in the big 12 conference let's look at some stats from last season and we are going to start with the colorado buffaloes and buffalo fans i'm sorry i do not mean to really rag on your team here but looking up and down the statistics board there really is not a redeeming quality about this team from last season i mean they were abhorrent offensively they were terrible defensively there was just not a, a whole lot of good to go around Boulder, Colorado last season. Uh, uh, I mean, they did pretty much everything wrong offensively, pretty much, pretty much everything wrong defensively. It's why they were one of the worst teams in FBS last year and only won one game. So now enter Deion Sanders, right? Coach Prime is in the building, and he has brought in his guys. And by his guys, I mean 50 to 60 transfers have entered this roster. Some of the more notable ones will start on the offensive end. His son, Shadur Sanders, uh, Jackson State transfer, will be playing quarterback for this team. And he's got a lot of dudes in the running back and wide receiver room. We'll start with the running back room, Alton McCaskill, Kaviasi Smoke are a couple transfers. McCaskill from Houston. Of course, he had that great 2021 year before not playing last year. Kaviasi Smoke from Kentucky. Those are some guys that are going to highlight the running back room and the wide receiver room. Travis Hunter, we'll be talking more about him later, but he's a Jackson State transfer that will play wide receiver and uh, uh, some defensive back for them as well. Xavier Weaver, uh, Jimmy Horn. Uh, are some guys that are going to be on, on the forefront. Willie Gaines, Devon Antonio, a couple freshmen, Amari and Miller, a Adam Hopkins. A lot of transfers on the offensive line as well. So it's an offense ready to do work, ready to go in the battle, and a defense that, that again, enters in a lot of new pieces as well. Leading the defensive front, you have guys like Jordan Dominic, Leonard Payne, and Derek M McClendon, uh, some really, really solid names there from the transfer portal. Des Moines Kennedy, Levante Bentley, Jeremiah Brown, Brendan Gant. Those are going to be some of the guys leading this linebacking unit. And in the defensive back room, uh, well, Trevor Woods is one of the very rare returners to this Colorado team. Of course, we've mentioned Travis Hunter. You have to mention him. Shiloh Sanders, Miles Slusher, and then a freshman, former Miami commit turned Colorado Buffalo. It's Cormine McClain, who uh, is supposed to be the next great cornerback college football has to offer. Sorry, I had to take a quick water break there. But what I'm trying to say is, uh, again, Boulder, Colorado is not necessarily in shambles, but it is just rocked right now, right? There are so many new pieces, so many new players, and we'll see how it works out for Colorado this year. But let's flip the dis let's flip uh, the discussion now over to the home team for this game. That's the TCU Horn Frogs. Can they go on another Cinderella-like run this year? Unlikely. Need a lot of things to work out because you lost a ton from this team last season. Uh, of course, you lost some great pieces in the wide receiver room, including Quentin Johnson. Max Duggan is gone. Top two leading rushers, D winners. Uh, Travis Hodges and Tomlinson on the defensive end are gone. Uh, there's a lot leaving. But again, this was a really solid offense last year. It was a really solid defense. They had to pull out some really close games. But uh, 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 again, the stats on both sides do not necessarily indicate a team that made a run to the national championship game. However, this is a TCU team that had the bounce the ball go uh the, go their way more often than not and what when i take a look at this tcu team this year i think it still has the opportunity to be a really solid team offensively did a lot of nice things i talked about all the pieces they're losing offensively but what a lot of people forget is that chandler morris was that number one quarterback coming out of week one he was that he was that first drive starter for this team. And while he is coming back, he will be that quarterback 
for the TCU Horn Frogs here in 2023. And there is still a lot of nice talent around him, even though you do lose uh, Di Mercado and uh, some other pieces out of the uh, uh, running back room. Imani Bailey is here. Trey Sanders has transferred in, I believe, over from Alabama. So those are a couple of huge pieces in the running back room. Wide receiver wise, Savion Williams, a senior is back. And then a whole ton of transfers come in behind him. Warren Thompson, JP Richardson, Jalen Robinson, uh, a freshman and Cordell Russell, Jojo Earl, a couple other transfers waiting in the wings as well. So it is a TCU offense that has some talent. Got a lot from the transfer portal. You're replacing some of those guys on the offensive line with uh, some transfers like a uh, 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 Colton Deary and uh, Willis Patrick as well. Uh, now, if we switch over to the defensive end, it's a defense that definitely had a bend but don't break mentality last year. It definitely could be that way again, but there is a fair share of seniors and experience on this defensive end. Defensive front is younger than most of their positions, but you do have guys like uh, 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 Caleb Fox coming back. Time and Mitchell are back. Uh, you got a couple other younger players up there as well. Linebacker room looks kind of like this. Johnny Hodges, Jamoy Hodge. Yeah, I know. Easy to get those two guys mixed up, but both of them are coming back. A lot of nice uh, talent behind them, including a freshman and Jonathan Bax. Uh, and then in the defensive back room, uh, you got guys like Josh Newton, Mark Perry, Bud Clark, uh, and Avery Helm with the transfer coming in. So there's still a lot of talent coming back to this TCU team. Yeah, they maybe are, are going to take a step back. I think a lot people are expecting them to they may not compete for a national championship again this year but hey i think this is still a team very much in the running for a big 12 title race let's get into your what to watch for now for colorado it's really what don't you watch for here i decided to pick out uh three things that i thought were maybe some some of the bigger ones but honestly there's really nothing you can't watch for when you watch colorado for the first time this season for for, for starters though there there is lots more talent not talents there is lots more talent on this team that has a lot more speed. This is going to be a lot faster of a Colorado team, which is going to uh, speed teams up uh, and definitely can get a, a team like TCU here on their heels. The, the offense and defensive lines, they have some great potential. I listed a lot of names, especially on the defensive line, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, again, have the potential and have the talent to be able to do great things, but they're going to need time to come together. Again, these are guys that are just coming together from all over the country to play on one football team. And it's definitely going to need to have, it's going to need some time to be able to work everything out. And I think I teased it a little bit earlier, but as Travis Hunter Football's Shohei Otani. If you don't know Sho Shohei Otani, great pitcher and hitter. Uh, actually just had an injury recently, so prayers up for Shohei Otani. But Travis Hunter is going to be playing wide receiver and corner for this Colorado team, and he could be really, really good in both positions. He could be some, he could be the leading receiver on this team, and he could be the leading tackler as well. Like His range is that big. His talent is just that great. I'm excited to watch Travis Hunter this college football season. All right. <clears throat> excuse me again i'm still trying to get over a little some moving on to the tcu horn frogs chandler morris started last season as the starting quarterback for a reason again a lot of people forget that coming into 2023 i think he's going to be more than solid uh and and will lead tcu to some very good things. I think Chandler Morris will be a very good quarterback for TCU here in 2023. The defense will work through what a loss. Again, D winners, Travis Hodges, Tomlinson, those are some big losses. However, there's a lot of experience on this defense. Yeah, the 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 defensive front maybe needs a little bit more time to come together, but the defense is going to work through its losses and overall TCU has just got to make the Buffaloes have to gel quicker. Again, this is the Colorado team with a lot of new pieces, a brand new head coach, a brand new coaching staff. It is a full-on culture change, uh, and this is a Colorado team that's going to need some time to be able to figure things out. TCU has maybe got to slow Colorado down, maybe not make them work as fast as they want to, uh, but force Colorado to gel and make some plays early. I think there's no doubt that TCU is going to end up winning this game here, but I do think Colorado is going to have some lightning strikes in this game, and Colorado is going to show some flash and some promise, and it's going to take TCU a little bit to figure out, uh, okay, how do we adjust to life without X, Y, and Z on the offensive and defensive ends? 
This is the big noon kickoff game. I think I have no doubt that TC was going to win this game, but how competitive can the Colorado Buffaloes make it? That's what I'm excited to find out. I think they'll make it fairly competitive, but I still think TC will walk away with the win in this game. That'll do it for my thoughts on this game. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. And as always, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.